how do you sell a product where people don't really understand and it's it's just totally different to anything else out there? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And it really is more information that a label can hold. So for the first five years, and honestly, even the first 10 years, I relied heavily on in-store sampling. Because with that opportunity, I was able to personally, or even with the help of my mother at the time, uh, personally interact and engage with the consumer. And, and usually what my approach was is I would first talk about the history of kombucha. So people knew that this wasn't like a fly by night snake oil or placebo or bogus product, right? Because there was a lot of those back in the day, like the, the Sobe and Snapple, they all had kind of like these fairy dusted types of products where they would put echinacea or other herbs in it, but there was really no nutritional value to them. So the consumer was very suspicious of what you said to them. So whenever I would talk about kombucha, I'd always talk about its history. I'd always talk about how it's made, right? And I would, I would use things like yogurt and miso and um, kefir and apple cider vinegar as examples of fermented foods that we all know in the health and wellness industry are basically bulletproof um, legacy ingredients that you know everybody knows how healthy they are. And then I would talk about the health benefits of what kombucha does. And I would never really make any claims. I would always say that kombucha, like many things in this world, lots of water, lots of sleep, lots of exercise, that when used in conjunction with a healthy lifestyle, you notice a, dr a, a dramatic and remarkable change and improvement in your health. And then what I would do is I would cut to my personal story as well as my mother's story. So what I shared with people firsthand is, I said, listen, I'm young, because I was 15, 16, 17 years old at the time, and I would say, I thought I was healthy. I was plant-based, raised a vegetarian, exercise, all that stuff, but when I started drinking kombucha, it gave me a new form of health. Like I would get sore throats, gone. I would get sick, gone. I'd get tired, gone. I would have indigestion or bloating, gone. And so that was really my firsthand testimonial of sharing with these new potential consumers that kombucha really could change their life, even if they think they don't need it. And then, of course, with the biggest selling point and the most inspirational aspect of my story and my early beginnings was, of course, my mother, right? Because my mother's success with her breast cancer was really remarkable. Um, you know, the doctors gave her a very bleak kind of diagnosis. They said she probably wouldn't live more than 12 months. And my mother, you know, obviously completely uh, defied that kind of prophecy and became a cancer survivor. And even during her, because she did have surgery and chemotherapy, and even through her treatments, which a lot of times can end up killing the patient, kombucha played a significant role in keeping her strong and resilient. So the long of the short is I was essentially sharing those personal stories with people to inspire them. And because it was really coming from the heart and not from like a really cool slogan or really cool, cool ad, people felt connected not only with the kombucha that I was offering, but as well as me and my company and my brand. Hey, Founder Fam, we hope that you loved that clip. If you did, you can click through right here to watch the full interview. You don't want to miss this one. See you there.